All right, here we go. Bones and Yugi in the Duelist Kingdom season. Uh, this is the first match of round three. Round three of 15. Now, uh, Yugi was... I can't remember if he won or lost. Let me pull that up so we can have a quick review. Of last round. Okay. Um, before we begin, let me give a quick shout out. Clayton, Claytown, 195, Jason Presland, Joe Lows, Jesse Gordon, Cata Lawrence, Amamiya Casual, Darkmaker75, Rainbow Saber, Mauricio Blankart, and Daedalus 8K. Thank you so much for all the comments. I've been going down and reading them every time I wake up in the morning. And I see all these comments and it's it's a nice thing to wake up to as well. So thank you to all you guys for tuning in every time I upload these Yu-Gi-Oh! plays. Really is making the series worthwhile doing. Alright, so as we are starting off, I did miss that card that Bones played. But Yugi has played Cage Musha of the Blue Flame in attack mode. And has gone on the offensive early with a weak kind of monster. He only had that card once. He had it in his hand in his match against Bakora in the anime. Um, oh, I was a stop defense. That's what he played. Wow, Bones has drawn a terrible hand. Like, ugh. Brother, ugh. That is one. That is a shocking hand. He can't play anything. He's going to have to hope that Yugi doesn't have like a Curse of Dragon or a Summon Skull in his hand, otherwise Bones is in trouble very, very early here. Alright, face down defense by Yugi, and it looks like, yep, he will attack again with Cage Musha of the Blue Flame. And Bones, he's going to have to draw something quickly, otherwise he's going to find himself losing to an 800 attack. That That's embarrassing. Oh, monster recovery, okay. Yugi has called Cage Musha back, and... That will allow him to draw a new hand, so he mustn't have been happy with the hand that he was previously holding. And we flip back to Bones. And... Oh, okay, Call of the Haunted's a good card, but he can't use it right now. Again, that's another... God, what a shocking starting hand to draw. He's had to skip his turn again, and he's... Gonna have to hope that Yugi doesn't have anything. And it's not looking good. There goes a tribute that was Mystical Elf and Summon Skull has come to the field. That's only a six star monster as well. That really should be seven stars. And Summon Skull attacks directly. That's 2,500 points off of Bones. He's down to 3,900 and we're only in turn six. Yugi is completely untouched. And there it's Dark Assailant. So that's the first monster that Bones can actually play. He does have a monster reborn, so he could bring back Mystical Elf. He could bring that back and equip that with Castle Walls, but there we go, Yugi has played another another monster. Right, Dark Assailants destroyed, Yugi went with Summon Skull to make it a sure thing. That's going to be another 1400 points off Bones, he's struggling. He can use Call of the Haunted to defend it, but he's opted not to. So that's probably so you can do a Tribute Summon for Crawling Dragon or something. It's not looking good for Bones, it's looking like he's lost this already. Ooh, Skull Lair. It's an interesting card, that one. Okay, Monster Reborn. Call of the Haunted. Alright, Call of the Haunted is played. Dark Assailant is brought back into play. That will go in attack mode, but it looks like Yugi is indeed going to go for a tribute summon and put Crawling Dragon to the field. Okay, that's going to be able to destroy Celtic Guardian and Bones might be able to survive one more turn. He does still have that monster reborn, maybe. He could revive Mystical Elf and lay down Castle Walls, but he's opted not to, or he may have not seen it. Even does Yugi play another monster down? He does, it's Feral Imp. It won't be able to destroy Crawling Dragon, but it will be able to knock out another chunk of Bones' life points. It won't knock him out this turn, but he is... He's only down to 300 life points, so... 
for Bones to turn this around, it would be a comeback of the century. So I don't think that's going to happen in this duel. There's Doki Roizu, the Grim Reaper. And it's looking like this one is called... Alright, Doki Roizu, or Doku Roizu, the Grim Reaper is... Face down defense, heads wants to be born, and Mystical Elf is going to come to the field now, and I would say that Castle Walls will be laid as well. That will give Bones the ability to survive another turn, but for what good it will do, he might draw a dark hole. You know, that could happen. And then maybe the maybe the duel will turn around, but Stranger things have happened. Mokuba did beat Mai after all. Alright, Yugi has gone with a face down defense. And nice play. Alright. Mystical Elf will deflect Summon Skull's attack. It'll cancel each other out. Beryl Imp has gone to attack the Kuroizu, the Grim Reaper. And Bones will get one more turn in before... And there's the Kuru Rider himself. Bones, to this day, has not played that card. He's never had the Ritual and the Monster together. Or them summoning material to summon it. It was a Griffor that was face down. And this duel is done. Summon Skull is going to knock out Feral Imp. And that will be that. Okay, Yugi wants to rub it in just a little bit more. Is this a Dark Magician? No, it's a Gaia the Fierce Knight. Also, very cool card. The two classic Yugi monsters on the field right now. Gaia the Fierce Knight will destroy Mystical Elf. And Summon Skull will finish off the job. Yugi will go up 1-0 in this match. And... Alright, convincing win. I, I didn't think Bones would be able to get over Yugi in this match, but it's a tough run for Bones here. He'll have to win two games in a row to pick up a season point. I don't think Bones has won yet either. Alright, as we set up, let's grab a quick drink before we get into alrighty Bonesy is up let's go they draw on rock paper scissors they draw on rock paper scissors again And Bones wins Rock, Paper, Scissors. Well, he had to win something. Bones elects to go first. All right, match number two. Let's see what we get out of this one. Hopefully we get a bit better of a duel. Yugi has drawn an okay hand. Griffor, Blackland, Fire Dragon. There's a Black Luster Soldier in there. He could summon that if he draws the Ritual card for it. Bones has gone with a face down spell or trap and he face down defense. So looking for a... Yugi also has that Swords of Revealing Light, so it's going to be tough for Bones to attack early on here as well. Right, Bones has activated Skull Lair. So if he has monsters in his graveyard... Um, let's say he has four monsters in his graveyard and Yugi has a level four face up monster on the field. Bones can send those four monsters from his graveyard out of play and destroy that level four monster on Yugi's side of the field. So if Black Luster Soldier was there, Bones would have to send eight. Is it seven or eight stars? Eight. Oh, there's a number underneath the monster as well, isn't there? So that's how Skull Lair works. I've actually got that card physical real life as well. It's one of the first cards I ever had from like one of the first booster packs I ever opened. I got Skull Lair out of... I also got a card called Spirit Elimination, which it's debated as one of the worst cards in the game. In fact, the card is that bad and the effect is... The way the effect works is like really, really unusual as well. You never use it 
for literally anything. Um, Spirit Illumination, it does... If monsters on the field are going to be tributed for something, you can change the target with the effect of Spirit Illumination or something, but it's a magic card, it's not a trap card, it's... I think I'm explaining it right, I might not be actually, but the effect and the use of this card is so poor. It's not even in this game. And so far, from like 2019 and previous, it's the only card that I've found that isn't like actually in this game, is Spirit Elimination. I literally couldn't find it, and I've got all the cards on this file, so... It's that useless, it was even left out of the game. Anyway, we have just had Black Luster Soldier summoned, with a Black Luster Ritual, which has been drawn very early on from Yugi. That is a mad draw. And Silver Fang has come to the field, and Down Goat Swords are revealing light. That will flip up all of those face downs, and they're all throwaways. Yugi has also got Mirror Force on the field. And it's looking like he is going to sweep the field, and he is probably going to win this in another two turns. So we're going to have a very, very short match by the look of it. Down goes Dukurizu the Grim Reaper. Although there's a few... A few monsters out of play now. As well, Bones might be able to activate Skull there. <coughs> and be able to get rid of something. Alright, Bones, what do you have? Oh! Oh dear! Oh wow, I did not see that coming. He had a dark hole. He has just obliterated Yugi's field, and Yugi has got no monsters left to play. He's got Swords of Revealing Light on the field, thankfully for Yugi himself. But wow, if he didn't have Swords of Revealing he does still have Mirror Force, mind you, as well, which... Going forward, when I do themed decks and other, like, series and stuff, I'm taking Mirror Force out of those decks, because Mirror Force is just a stupid card. It's like... You can play... A strategy of a themed deck to absolute perfection. Oh, Dukuru Rider! Dukuru Rider has come to the field. I'm happy. I've never seen Bones play this card before. He's finally summoned it. It's not even a good card. It's not that strong. It's just, it's just, he's a cool looking card. And he's finally been played to the field only to have a level three giant soldier of stone be defensively stronger anyway. Ah, uh, such is Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Mirror Force. It's, ooh, Sword of Dark Destruction. That'll put the Kuro Rider even a little bit stronger. So, literally, this is why I don't like Mirror Force, because Bones has just pulled a rabbit out of a hat. He's got the Kuro Rider to the field. It doesn't even matter, because Yu-Gi's got a Mirror Force just laying on the field, which costs nothing to use. So, no, I don't like Mirror Force. I think the card is too powerful. It should be banned. There's other cards that have been banned that are less powerful than Mirror Force. Like, you can play a deck, a themed deck, like the Amazon S deck, the Gravekeeper deck as well. You can play that strategy to absolute perfection just to have your entire field completely blown to shit because of Mirror Force and it changes the whole duel. It's... I don't like that card. I mean, I like it when I'm using it against the AI, but that's a different story. So, you know, when going forward, when I'm doing other tournaments and more of these duels, Mirror Force will not be present in decks, because it'll be present in Yuki's deck for this, because we're doing an anime theme. But, no, when it comes to the proper themed decks tournament, Mirror Force will not be participating. Okay, Bones has actually used Skullair. He's released three monsters and he's destroyed Giant Soldier of Stone because that's only a level three. So Bones removed from play three monsters from his graveyard and he could destroy a level three monster on Yugi's side of the field. Now Bones' little blue box is coming up, so he's maybe using it again for Feral Imp. Does he have four monsters? I think he does. I think there might have been a little bit of player confusion on 
getting the trap activated, but they've sorted it out. There we go, Skull Lair has also got rid of Feral Imp. Damn, two monsters. Two monsters wiped out by that trap card. That's saved bones from getting attacked and losing like 2,600 life points. It's turn 17 and both players are still on 8,000 life points. That's very, very rare. Okay, there's Mystical Elf. Ooh, Robin Goblin. That's a very dangerous card if Bones does life point damage by battle. Random cards from Yugi's hand will go to the graveyard, so he doesn't want Mystical Elf in attack mode with that on the field. He wants that in defense. Good move by Yugi not to attack. Bones ends his turn. Ooh, Dark Magician. Although, still a good move, you don't want Mystical Elf in attack mode with Robin Goblin on the field. Not an 800 attack, okay, 1350 and there you go, Crass Clown. From defense to attack position. And Bones has actually gone for an attack. He may have been better off playing the effect of... of Crass Clown, but... But also, Bones does need to win this duel, and you can only win these duels by attacking, so... Anyway, there's Mammoth Graveyard as well. Although, that effect can still be activated if Cross Clown goes from attack... Oh no, Mystic Box. That, you don't need a Spellcaster for that, you can use any monster. So, and it looks like Yugi's using it, so he's going to give Bones his... Mammoth Graveyard to destroy Crass Clown, so that way Bones can't use the effect. Good play, actually. I hope Yugi draws Karibo. We can see Karibo tokens pop up on the field. That's fun. Even Summon Skull, we can play Mokiu with him as well. Alright, face down defense from Bones. And end phase. Ooh, Curse of Dragon. Nice. Do you go on the offensive from here? Yugi has elected to. It's not a bad move. You get Bones' as monsters off the field, so he can't get Patrician of Darkness or something to the field. Yugi too. He has to attack eventually, so might as well do it when he's got his 2,000 attacker in his hand, available to be summoned. He could summon... He could draw Gaia and Polymerization too. Guy the Dragon Champion to the field, that's his fusion card. Ooh, Bones tributes Mammoth Graveyard and summons... Ooh, Pumpkin the King of Ghosts. It's not strong enough to defeat Curse of Dragon. Oh my god, that face down he played with Violet Crystal. Was that a bluff? Was he trying to bluff that as another trap card? Well, it's 2100. Yugi's going to take battle damage, life point battle damage, and he's going to lose a random card in his hand. Oh, multiply, Karibo. Ooh, but then again, that could also get Dark Magician to the graveyard as well, which, in theory, if Yugi draws Monster Reborn, Dark Magician being in the graveyard is a good thing, but it's a difficult card to summon because you do need to tribute twice to get it on the field. Now, Yugi's only got a Beaver Warrior. That won't be able to withstand an attack from Pumpkin. Okay, face down defense from Bones. That's a strange move. Wonder what card that is. Because he could have done more life point damage here. It could have also just been an instinct as well, just to slap down a defense as well. Anyway, Bones suddenly now is the one with the advantage, and Yugi is actually in real trouble. Only just a minute ago, he had. Black lost a soldier on the field along with two other attackers and he looked like he was going to annihilate Bones in about two turns. Okay, Temple of Skulls is flipped up. Yugi's got nothing on the field and he's going to lose two cards out of his hand. I don't see Yugi winning this. He's, he's going to lose this match. It's possibly going to a tiebreaker. It doesn't matter what card goes to his hand, Yugi can't do anything, and it is Mokiu, so if Yugi drew Monster Reborn, he couldn't even get Dark Magician back. Horn Imp. 
That'll get rid of Temple of Skulls at least, but Yugi, he's now only got one card in his hand. So by default, he's going to lose Dark Magician on the next turn anyway. He's going to have no cards in his hand, he's done. He won't be able to come back from this because he's consistently going to be losing whatever card he draws due to Robin Goblin. Oh, there's reinforcements as well. Yeah, this one's over. Bones is actually going to pick up a win against Yugi, which is... You wouldn't call that. You would think that Yugi would beat Bones easy every time, but this is why these duels are so good, because even the weaker duelists always have that chance to win, and it's not a slight chance. Mokuba beat Mai, which was a shock. So anything can happen. I didn't pick Mokuba to win a single duel, but in round two, he did it. Okay, Temple of Skulls attacks. Dark Magician's already in the bin. Another 3,100 points. Yugi's going to be left with only 800 life points, and this is going to this is going to be a win for Bones. Tell you what, that Skull Lair is a very, very good card for this generation of Yu-Gi-Oh. Especially if you get a lot of those throwaways to the bin. Now, there is a card called. Oh, what's it called? It's got like two mummified heads on the f on it. It's a trap card. A Grave Robber's Retribution, I think it's called. From memory. Alright, Iggy has lost. He drew the magical hats. I think it's called Grave Robber's Retribution. Let me quickly Google it. Because it goes really well with that card. Um, Iggy, -Oh, Grave Robber's... Retribution. Actually, I think that might be in Bones' deck. I think I put it in. Yeah, Grave Robber's Retribution. During each of your standby phases, I'm, I'm almost certain I've added that to Bones' deck. Inflict 100 points of damage to your opponent's life points. That's for every... Yeah, inflict 100 points of damage to your opponent's life points for every monster that has been removed from play from your graveyard. So Bones had like seven monsters removed from his graveyard. If he had that card on the field, he'd be doing 700 points of life point damage per his standby phase or turn or wherever that effect comes in. So Grave Robber's Retribution along with... Um oh, now the name of that other card's just escaped me. I've got too many cards floating in my head. Yeah, it's the one that Bones played in the last duel. You all know the one. Okay, Bones... Ugh, that's... Ugh, that's a bad hand. Stop defense, so you can flip up and see what is down, and it is... Giant Soldier of Stone. Reinforcements could give a 500 attack boost. I think Bones might have been hoping that was the Mystical Elf, because he could have destroyed it with this combo. So he's going to power it up, he's, it's kind of an obvious bluff, but would Yugi be thinking, is that actually a bluff? Do you have a power up face down? Like reinforcements? Skull Lair. that's the name of the other card that Bones is playing. Yeah, Skull Lair and Grave Robber's Retribution. Not as powerful in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, but back in this day, great combo. It is an absolutely fantastic combo. I have both of those cards for real as well up in my shoebox, up in my closet, where my old Yu-Gi-Oh cards live. Now Bones has elected not to attack. He must. He wants Yugi to attack him. I don't know about that strategy, but we'll see. Now, Yugi with another face down defense. Both players conservative here. It's winner take all, believe it or not. I did not think I'd be saying that in the Yugi and Bones match. Yugi has just played Swords of Revealing Light. There it is, Skull there. So he may be able to utilize that effect again. It won him the match last time when it got rid of Giant Soldier of Stone and. Barrel Imp, I think it was. Okay, Yugi with a tribute, and he has pulled fourth. It's a 
guy? No, okay this time. It is Dark Magician. He gets the Dark Magician to the field. This is what lost him the duel in the last game. He didn't have Dark... Oh, he had Dark Magician, but he couldn't get it to the field. And then he lost it from his hand. Alright, so that's 1,500 points that's going to come off of Bones. Yugi with the advantage. Especially because Bones has got bugger all in his hand. And Wandering Doomed, that will at least protect life points. Bones will flip up Skull Lair. And he will hope that he can get seven monsters to the graveyard so he can destroy the Dark Magician if he wants to use Skull Lair's effect. He will need seven monsters in the graveyard to correspond with the level seven of the Dark Magician. Alright, Yugi with a face down defense. And from here, he might as well just keep wiping off Bones' defenses. Bones will only be able to keep that up for so long. Alright, the Wandering Doomed is destroyed. I was having a thought about another dual series, but I don't know how well it will work because it's kind of... like, it might be a bit average, but I was thinking a duel, but you're not allowed to use effect monsters. All of the monsters in your deck have to be normal monsters, like Temple of Skulls. You use normal monsters, magic and trap, and that's it. You don't use any effect monsters. And then I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool to make decks out of normal monsters that are all under a thousand points, and you have to strategically pick magic and trap cards to power them up? We're talking like old, old school Yu-Gi-Oh! Like the beginning of time Yu-Gi-Oh! with that sort of deck format. Like, Dual Monsters is all about combining your monster cards with your magic cards to increase their strength, Joey. So it's an interesting idea. I just don't know if it will really be that interesting to watch if you're watching all these really weak monsters struggle to beat each other up with while trying to draw the right equip cards and and all that, but it would be it'd almost be like Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories in a way, because that game there were no effect monsters in that game, you just had monsters and magic cards, there weren't many trap cards in it, and if they were they kinda became obsolete in that game anyway, I'm getting distracted, I do believe Bones is about to get blown to bits and Yugi has pulled back Giant Soldier of Stone. I, was that even necessary? Well, maybe. Okay, Bones did have a Call of the Haunted. That will only go in face-up attack, though. But it will save 900 life points off of a direct attack. Wait, doesn't Bones have reinforcements on the field? Don't use it now. Use it when Giant Soldier of Stone might have attacked. I don't know about that move. Bones could have actually destroyed Giant Soldier of Stone. I, I mean, it's not going to make any difference anyway, but he could have held that, waited for Giant Soldier of Stone to attack, and then used it. Either way... Oh, well, there you go. He can actually destroy Giant Soldier of Stone anyway. Yugi might not have had 8,000 life points at the end of it. That's really the only difference, and... Somehow, some way, Bones has managed to salvage himself another turn here. Imagine if he drew Dark Hole. Come on, draw Dark Hole. Draw Dark Hole. Okay. See, this is why that series which I was just talking about might not work. Bone Mouse would be one of those sorts of monsters you would be playing, and then you'd be equipping it with a Violet Crystal and a sort of dark destruction where the sword is bigger than the mouse itself but then it would be 1100 instead of 400 and then maybe those fusion cards that you got in the legend of blue eyes packs that was like the zombie warrior which was like a 1200 attack without an effect it's a fusion card and um there were a few of them uh there was another one which was like 1100 as well i think that might have been cherubin the fire knight he was like 1100 
attack as a fusion, you know, then all those cards get to have a run. Well, anyway, I've talked enough. I have... The duel is concluded. Yugi will pick up the season point. To be honest, that second duel was actually a really quality match as well. But uh, stay tuned in about an hour, half hour or so, depending how my production stuff goes. Let's hope it goes better than last night and doesn't get delayed. But there will be a Battle City match as well. And it is Ishizu vs... Esperoba, which should actually be a pretty interesting match, and then, but that's the one match knockout cup, and then we'll have a look at their decks, so we can sort of get a taste of the Battle City full season mode, well, thanks for tuning in, I am going to get that duel up and produced, so it can be out straight up after this one, thanks everyone for tuning in, I will see you again shortly, farewell.